Greetings, what is up everybody? Welcome to my channel and to this video. Today we're going to be installing this glass shower door, which I assume is why you're here. How difficult is this job? Can it be done with one person or two people? Uh, what are the instructions step by step? Look at this beautiful shower door I recently installed. So we're going to be addressing those questions and more. Keep in mind, I am not a professional at all. I am following the uh, instructions. Just a handyman do-it-yourselfer. So do this at your own risk. Glass can shower, shatter and be very dangerous. Anyway, here is our before picture, our original shower renovation. I've tiled it and made separate videos and all that, so search my channel if you're interested in learning more about that. But this is the shower door. I ordered it on Amazon. It arrived in a crate like this. A little bit of damage. Did it hold up to the damage? We'll see. I'm going to put the link for this shower door down below in the description, as well as any of the tools and supplies that I use in this video, so be sure to check that out. Also, the instruction manual I will pop down there as well, because the instruction manual does an okay job of walking you through step by step, but again, hopefully this video can give you some tips and tricks. The company is Woodbridge. They're based out of California. Customer service is pretty good. I had an issue with a crack. I'll talk about that later, briefly. So I highly recommend, eh, not highly, but I recommend this company. Three and a half, maybe four stars out of five. But the glass shower door itself, amazing quality. Very, very impressed for the price point. We'll get into all those details in a moment. You can see how I'm actually uncrating the door. Although there was a little damage to the wood crate, the glass is really, really well packed. There is no way this thing is budging. Now, obviously, you can't pick it up and throw it down. Good luck trying to pick it up anyway. A big truck will deliver this to your driveway, so it's pretty much stationary once it comes off of the truck, and it's up to you to uncrate it and to cut the cardboard along the sides like you saw and to unpackage everything. Pretty simple, although if it's your first time, of course, be really careful. You don't want to put your razor blade that you're cutting through the cardboard through the glass or anything like that. Uh, but what we're doing here is just unpacking each piece of styrofoam and all of the parts and just kind of getting them organized and separated right out of the box. So all the hardware and whatnot comes equipped. Everything that you pretty much need for this job is included. There's a glass, uh, obviously the glass door itself is compo comprised of two uh, pieces, a stationary glass door or a stationary glass and then the actual sliding door. And the instruction manual does identify them by that. They say the stationary glass and the, the glass door. So that's important to know the nomenclature, the terminology of the instructions. I'll be referring to those. So again, just beautifully packaged. I'm really happy with the quality here. I was really hesitant, should I order a glass door online? But uh, the reviews were pretty good. You can check those out yourself. Obviously, some people have issues. Nothing's perfect. Nobody's perfect, right? So, anyway, uh, we're going to open up the hardware. Look at this gorgeous brush nickel. Everything, each piece is really heavy. Um, we'll be picking that up later. And I'm just initially struck by the uh, visual quality here. And uh, I was expecting for that price point maybe to open this up and feel things a little cheap, right? Um, maybe, I mean, I think I paid 550 bucks total for this or 600 bucks, which is pretty good. This is a frameless door and this is kind of what everything looks like. Obviously you can't feel it, but I assure you each piece seems to be uh, very well made, heavy, durable, Nothing cheap at all. These are the different parts. They are individually identified in the instruction manual. If you want the actual names, you can pop open that, that link up, find the instructions. And there's like rollers, brackets, very a variety of brackets. These are the heavy duty rollers. We'll be installing all this stuff later, so. Just give you a little visual tour of what to expect. There's the handle. 
and the actual bar itself. Now this shower bar is adjustable. In other words, you can cut down this shower bar to fit the finished length of your shower opening or width, I should say. We'll be talking about that in a minute. So definitely recommend two people for the job of getting the glass out and visually inspecting it. I had uh, the help of my wife. It's doable with two people like that. I do not recommend lifting this yourself. Glass does break. This is tempered glass. Any nick or any bump or any contact with tile, stone, anything harder than the material of the glass, and you can suffer a crack. Now, this is a crack you can see with my finger here, uh, not from shipping, but some type of manufacturing defect. I contacted the company and sent them in some pictures. We can see possibly some hairs or hairline fractures happening in the glass. So this was a faulty piece of glass. Um, but keep in mind, this could also be a hair that's trapped into the on one side of the glass. There is a shatterproof film that's applied. So it's tempered glass. Stuff is pretty durable. I ended up taking this uh, one piece to the dump. And look at that. It suffered, it didn't break into a million pieces. It suffered a little crack there, you can see. But uh, you never know with this stuff, right? You want to treat it with absolute care. Be really, really careful that it never comes into contact with anything harder than the surface. So always use wood or foam or whatnot to rest it on. I'm just clearing out a space in my garage. You can see the top has foam behind it too. And I'm just doing a visual inspection to make sure everything looks crystal clear. That glass should be crystal clear. All right. Now... The first step here, we're going to take a regular shower curtain and just put it up to get the exact uh, width. You can certainly use a tape measure or you can clamp two pieces of wood together to kind of get that perfect uh, width because we're going to be cutting down, measuring and cutting down the included sh uh, roller bar here. So you can see the shower curtain right there. I have everything lined up. And they've got these little end pieces here, and they're going to fit in like that. And you basically want the end of the end piece, so just like that, to be the exact length of the opening of your finished shower wall, right? So what we're going to do here is take these little end pieces and just kind of line things up. Now that roller bar will go inside that end piece by about a half, excuse me, about, a, about an inch. Okay, we can actually measure that depth right there. Because with that fully installed, again, you want that width or that length of the roller bar plus the end pieces to be the exact uh, width of your finished shower opening. So that's what we were doing there. Uh, we'll come back to that in just a minute. Uh, another thing I'm just going to take a look at is the actual bracket, or the guide bracket down here that's, uh, that basically holds your stationary glass and your sliding glass door kind of in place. You can see I'm dealing with a, a threshold on my shower pan that's not only super narrow, but a little rounded. So what I'm going to be doing, and I obviously do not recommend this. I'm not condoning this at all. You could void your warranty and possibly this could end up in a uh, fractured glass, right? But I'm going to be using some shims, not wood, but a plastic shim uh, to kind of level that out because you'll see that the glass door, the weight is actually distributed mostly on the roller bar that we'll be installing right here. And so not on the brackets themselves, but I'll get to that later. Okay, let's get back to the roller bar. You can see I have my uh, pencil indicator indicating the cut line. And cutting this bad boy, this is extremely heavy duty stainless steel. I uh, started off with a hacksaw if you've got a metal cutting uh, miter saw, that would be optimal. But I took this baby down with my Dremel. Started off with a hacksaw to get that initial cut uh, so my Dremel tool didn't slip. And then I've got some metal cutoff wheels. And I went through about three or four of these. Uh, and I just slowly, it doesn't have to be a perfect, perfect cut, but you want it to be nice and even. And you can file off the, the metal uh, ends there. And once that's on there, we're going to go ahead and tighten down the end piece just like that. The Allen wrenches are included. And you've got two little hex nuts that secure it to the bar. We're just going to tighten one of them and just to measure to make sure that uh, we cut correctly. Spend some time measuring before you cut. You only want to have to do this one time and you don't want to mess it up and contact the company and say, send me a new bar. So everything looks really good. We cut accurately with those end pieces on. And next up, we're going to be installing the stoppers 
those have to be installed early on. Well, I suppose they don't have to be, but you might as well knock this out right now. Uh, we're going to undo the hex nut using the provided Allen wrench. And there are two of these. And the idea is to just get that hex nut above so you can slide it on like that. And we'll be adjusting these and tightening them down, ex putting them the, in the exact position a little later. But for now, we just need to get them on and in there. So you might need to undo the hex nuts, slide it on, tighten them up a little bit. They do wob They do kind of fall downward if they're loose. Can you see that? If you pick up the bar, it'll swing down. So make sure those are hand tight. Don't need to overdo it or anything like that. Now this, uh, this other one we're going to be installing on the, look at the position of the, um, the little roller here that's already pre-mounted onto the bar. We're going to be undoing this piece and sliding the stopper on this end and then putting this roller back on the bar, if that makes sense. So we'll carefully undo this because you want to put it back in the correct way. So it might help to film it yourself while you do this or take a picture. Obviously the instruction manuals tell you, the instruction manual tells you uh, the order of, of things. Because sometimes there's these little clear gaskets or these little gaskets that you can't see very well and they might fall off or you might not remember how to put them back on. So see what I did there? You just take that off, put the stopper on and then put the roller back on attaching it to the bar like that and hand, hand tighten everything down again again you don't have to overdo anything we'll be finalizing every all the um, all the, the tightening process in later steps because you'll have to adjust things occasionally all right so we'll get that end piece on that's kind of what that looks like and these will fall off if they're not loose if they're not tightened down right so when you pick up that bar those pieces are really heavy. Make sure they don't fall onto your shower pan or your tile in your bathroom, right? All right, approximate. The stopper should be approximately whatever that was, five and a quarter or something on the stationary glass side and then somewhere around three and three quarters on the glass door side. Now, of note, I am going to be installing this opposite of the instructions in terms of the stationary glass and the glass shower door because in my we shower... decided that we want the shower door, the glass door on the right, and the stationary glass on the left. And the instructions, it's basically opposite. So I had to reverse everything. So keep that in mind as you watch this video to make sure your orientation is correct. Use the instruction manual for a left-handed door. Uh, and this video will show you kind of how I did a right-handed door. The glass panes are reversible. All right, so this is the lower bracket that we're going to be installing on the uh, stationary glass piece. This does not bear any weight. Keep in mind these lower brackets uh, do not bear weight. So the instruction manuals say that you should be drilling holes in the bottom of your threshold on your shower pan to keep these pieces in place. However, as you'll see in later steps, I am avoiding that. I don't have any holes drilled. Uh, I do not recommend that. I'm not condoning that. The instruction manual calls for holes. I'm just using um, this special adhesive, and I'll get to that later. But uh, this is kind of the anatomy of that bracket piece. You saw how that went on there. And basically, no metal comes into contact with the glass. You've got these, um, basically, these clear gaskets on everything. So uh, you can put your glass horizontal on a bed, for example or you can kind of prop it up onto some thick cardboard because you want to be able to access this piece right here. So this is my stationary piece and you can see there's a little U-shaped opening at the bottom. And we're gonna be uh, kind of dry fitting and installing the little square shaped bracket, bottom bracket. And to do so, there are those clear gaskets. So that basically prevents the metal coming into contact with the glass. And they kind of suction cup on there a little bit. So as soon as you put those gaskets on, it's kind of hard to rotate them. And that basically provides grip. And with the idea is that when that's attached to your shower pan threshold, that's going to basically provide it. That's your anchor for that corner of your stationary glass piece. Okay. So that's kind of how, 
how that works. Let me get a better angle here for you. Now it's not uh, clear to me from the instructions if it should be flush or slightly uh, lower than the shower glass. Obviously it's a little crooked and I'll figure, I'll fix that up. But uh, I basically did it kind of flush. Again, it doesn't bear any weight or it shouldn't bear any weight. You could probably do it like a, an eighth of an inch, the, the glass an eighth of an inch higher if you wanted to, you could, you could probably get away with that. All right. So what we are doing here is unloosening the roll bars that are pre-installed onto the, or the rollers that are pre-installed onto the roll bar. We did this earlier to get that stopper on, if you remember. But I am curious about this, this piece here, the instruction manual. You can see that's got this little bushing on there that is called a high point and a low point. So when you turn this, this will provide some really minuscule adjustments on the stationary glass piece. We're gonna be installing this to the stationary glass. And this is how you basically uh, do it, or at least how I did it. Now the instruction manual says you should be facing that high piece. Can you see that metal high piece in the middle? See how it's a little thicker? Uh, toward the direction of your, op your, your glass door opening. When I called customer service to verify that, I was told that it should point up. And we're gonna be testing that in just a minute to see, bringing that out to the garage to see, okay, what does this piece actually do and how does it work? because I wanted to understand it before I made a decision and permanently installed it on there. Now, when you take those little rollers off, uh, be careful, there's a little metal piece on the inside that might be loose. You don't want anything to be f moving around in there. So just make sure that that hex nut is tight down there. There we go, we're good to go. Okay, so here's that high piece that I was looking or talking about just a minute ago. Uh, with that that bushing okay so look at that the instruction manual says okay that should be pointed basically toward the right in my or in this situation of the instruction manual um, okay so it was a little unclear with the diagram which way it should be pointed so what I did was I just took a piece of uh, wood that that's the same thickness of the glass just some scrap wood and I drilled a hole with the same um, whole width as the hole in the glass, right, to represent the glass. Okay, so we're going to be installing this as it would be on the glass to see, okay, what is it exactly is this little uh, weird shaped high point bushing all about? Uh, what does it do when I turn it, for example, to the left or to the right? How does this adjustment actually work? So uh, I got my sawhorses out and hooked up this, uh, this bar to a piece of scrap wood. Now there's a couple of holes. Obviously you've got your main tightening bolts, the hex nut right there with the, I think it's the biggest Allen wrench that comes with it. So it's a heavy duty bolt as it should be because that's holding up. It's gonna be uh, the main, the main uh, load bearing roller uh, attaching the glass to the roller bar. Okay, but it also allows for you to spin and adjust that uh, kind of that little bushing piece. And I'm gonna hold the camera as still as I can, but look what happens when I turn this. It actually moves the glass up or down. There's also a little hole on the outside that uh, you can visually keep track of where that bushing point is, okay? So the hole represents the low point, the opposite side. So, Hopefully that there's that hole right there. And with that hole pointed down, the high point is facing up. And again, customer service told me, make sure that that high point is facing up. But the instruction manual says, make sure it's facing uh, toward the, the opening of the door. Um, so I kind of met them halfway and I originally installed it with that kind of diagonally. But again, I understood, okay, if I turn it left or turn it right, I know what was gonna, what was gonna happen. And honestly, 
I don't think it makes that much of a difference because again, you can install it and adjust it a little later to make sure it's perfectly, your door is perfectly level. All right, so long story short here, let's go ahead and get this installed. I have the glass door propped up against a folding ladder with lots of cushion. And you can see how I'm attaching that. Got a little piece of tape on there so that piece didn't fall out, just kind of held it in place. And everything is pretty tight. This is what it looks like. There's that adjuster piece that I referenced earlier. All right, now that our rollers are installed to the stationary glass piece, we're gonna be dry fitting. So grab a helper and bring it in and you're gonna just push it up against the wall where you kind of want it to be. Make sure you level it uh, both vertically and make sure that rail is level horizontally. And then we will be marking the rail ends with a pencil. Of course, that has to be perfect. So take your time. Don't do this by yourself. It's incredibly heavy. Get a helper. And again, make sure you protect the corners at all times on your threshold as well. I have cardboard. I have foam. I have blankets. You don't want to let this stuff, this thing go. What a disaster that would be. So we've got both ends marked, the outline of the bracket, and then we will indicate the center point. Now you might want to verify with a tape measure to make sure that the uh, everything is is measured correctly because we're going to be drilling a hole through the tile and once you do that there's no turning back now this is the actual uh, end piece on the on the bar itself and there's a metal brass piece inside now the uh, included screws i wasn't happy with so i went to the store and bought a variety of lag bolts and i wanted this baby to be super secure in order to do so, we're going to take this off. There's a third little hex nut at the top there that secures the brass metal piece into the end of the stainless piece. So we're going to loosen that up, and then this little brass piece should just pop out or fall out. I need to jiggle it a little bit. There we go. Now this is the piece we're going to be securing to the wall. Now because I upgraded the lag bolt size, I had to widen out the uh, the hole there in the metal bracket. Now I had never drilled a hole through tile before, uh, so that was uh, really fun. I got these special glass and tile drill bits, and you're supposed to keep them lubricated, so I have a spray bottle there with water in it. Tape to protect, protect in case it slips off um, or just to help kind of encourage uh, some friction there. And I'm constantly, check out what I'm doing here, I've got my smallest drill bit uh, setting first, and I'll put links down below for this drill bit. It was like, I don't know, five or six bucks for a pack of five or six, so really affordable. And constant lubrication. If you don't have water, you can actually see it start to heat up and smoke. And when you spray water on the blade, it actually, you can hear it hissing as the water cools down the heat from the blade. So uh, lubrication is definitely a must. And I'm doing a few uh, high pressure, medium pressure spins and then spraying inside the hole and the blade. And, you know, it probably took a minute or two before it actually penetrated the porcelain tile. We'll wipe away everything. Look at how clean that cut. A beautiful, beautiful hole. Now I then I upgraded to a, the next size up so that my lag bolt can fit through without damaging the tile. And I did include these anchors on there. Uh, don't hammer it all the way in. You're going to crack your tile. So get out a razor blade and cut off the rest of it so it's flush with your tile. And it's preferable to make sure that you have a uh, a wood stud back there. Uh, and so here I am installing a pretty heavy duty long wood screw and the other side I'll be using a heavy duty lag bolt because my glass door side I think bears more of a load so I wanted that to be um, beefed up so to speak a little bit a little bit more but you would have your choice depending on uh, your own preference now once those holes are uh, drilled out we're going to be installing these massive rollers to the actual glass uh, shower door the sliding door itself 
Here's the anatomy of this piece, heavy duty hex nut in the middle. And again, take things off. There's that bushing again that we saw that allows for some minute adjustments that we saw on the stationary door piece. So it's a similar operation there. And again, make sure your gaskets are in place. You don't want uh, any metal touching the glass itself. And then we've got the same kind of operation before. You've got some adjustment screws, hex nuts that allow the things to be loosened up and whatnot. And the instruction manual shows you how uh, to do that in more detail pretty well. Again, you might want to play around with it first before you put this on so you understand how it works. And we'll go ahead and tighten those, tighten those up. Two little hex screws there. You have to have those loose in order to uh, undo the big, the main hex bolt. And then reversing that, you have to have them both tight after you tighten the main hex bolt. All right, we'll get that uh, other anchor in and cut it off. Now I'm going to give it a big blast of silicone. Don't let it dry. You want to make sure you're uh, ready to install. And that'll help waterproof the hole that we just drilled. And we'll get that other one mounted. Here's my heavy duty hex bolt. I think it's a quarter inch thickness and three inches or three and a half inches. I can't remember. But it's going right into a stud, so that baby is not going anywhere. All right, now we're going to go ahead and put the stationary glass door and the rod in place. And we're going to slide those end pieces over and then tighten them up. Okay, so you'll actually slide those end pieces over the brass piece that's, uh, that you just installed on the, on the tile. And then tighten them up. Now the bottom is going to be unattached. Notice that the weight is all on the rail. It's actually not coming in contact with my threshold. Therefore, I personally didn't feel like I needed to drill a hole through my threshold. Plus, I have an irregular shaped threshold, so drilling a hole would be really awkward. So I'm using some plastic shims, making sure that that is level. And I'm going to be using this special adhesive, silicone adhesive, and I'll put links down below for this. You could probably get away with using regular uh, silicone, but this is a special adhesive property, um, and it got really good reviews, and this is what I'm using to secure it. Now I can't speak for the longevity of it. If I have, if I will have to end up securing it with a screw at some point later on, but I felt pretty good about about this. I'm going to let it cure for 24 hours, making sure it is in the correct position, and we'll go ahead and get that shim glued as well, and get everything in place. This is how it kind of looks. And no metal on glass, so you want to stop just shy of it touching. Or at least that's how I did it. And then I've got this little shim, the wood shim, to kind of keep it in place so that it's perfectly level where I want it to be. So make sure it's level before everything dries, of course. I'll put the camera down and get that level. I need two hands there. Okay. And then it has to be square. So looks like it need to, needs to adjust a little bit. I'll just kind of push that to the right. Make sure that is indeed at a 90 degrees. Or a 90 degree angle, I should say. There we go. And that's kind of where we're at. So we've got the stationary piece. Uh, secured on the bar. The bar is secured to the wall. The guide bracket or the guide rail down here is now dry and that baby is not going anywhere. I feel really good about about that. I had a little piece of tape for a spacer. Wow, I'm impressed. Now this bottom bracket, again you're supposed to screw that to the threshold and follow the instructions 
so you don't void your warranty, right? You want this to be screwed down. I'm just showing you kind of what, what I did. So again, take this all this with a grain of salt. Um, I ended up just gluing this piece down because it's not a load bearing bracket. All the weight is on the bar itself. Uh, I should have mentioned that before you install this, make sure your glass door this is actually inside your shower. Did you notice that? That's right. If you don't do this step, you're going to have a heck of a time trying to get that, that glass shower door through that small opening. All right. So to install the glass shower door itself, the sliding door, it just kind of lifts up. You have to guide it into the rail just like that. And then the, the, you can see we've got uh, the rollers on the actual bar. Next, we'll tighten up the stoppers to make sure that the glass door is not in contact with your tile wall. And these pieces right here are your safety pins that install on the shower, the glass door itself uh, that prevent you from being able to lift up the, the door. In other words, it keeps those the rollers on. Can you see how we're going to install it? They're just right south of the actual guide bar. So when those are secured and tightened, you can't lift up the glass shower door. And that's a safety feature. We're going to slide the glass shower door all the way forward very slowly, making sure that it does not come into contact with the uh, tile and make sure the other one is installed too. There are is no metal on glass remember make sure those washers are in place now this is the anti splash piece you have the option of installing it right here uh, and it kind of prevents splash from going between the glass right because there's a little bit of a gap there and you'll have to cut that down to size so it doesn't um, affect you know doesn't touch the roller bar there and it just slides in and you kind of wiggle it back and forth put a little pressure on it be careful though not too much pressure right and it goes in just like that now i'm not gonna i'm gonna take that piece off and i'm gonna see how it goes without it because i don't think my water can do a 180 degree turn when it's spraying but we'll see uh, now this is the the piece that goes on the glass shower door here uh, and this will help make a watertight seal when you close the door between the glass and the tile it'll also help with impact right because you don't want glass touching tile kind of a repeating theme right and you can adjust that just a little bit we will in a minute for now we're just going to put it on let's go ahead and get the handle installed as well note the pieces of the handle this is the top we've got some clear gaskets so remember the order in which it's all pre-installed, right? So just take it off carefully. Make sure you understand what piece goes where. And we'll get the bottom one installed as well. Got the clear rubber gaskets in place, preventing contact between metal and glass. And tighten those babies up. All right, we are nearing the home stretch. We're almost done here with the majority of this project, and I'm feeling pretty good about it. We've got a water test, waterproof. Make sure everything's sealed up, nothing's splashing on the floor. I'm going to get those stoppers in a better position because I want it to stop the glass door just shy. Be really careful here. I want it to kind of stop just shy of that. Now, if you do have a gap or an irregular, because the tile that, that on this wall might be irregularly shaped, right? You can, again, adjust that, um, that strip and kind of, you'll, you'll kind of, with your fingernail, kind of push it forward to help close the gap. So you do have some little bit of room for error there. There we go. And here you kind of push it forward like that. Can you see that? All right. I'm pretty happy with that. We're going to adjust the stopper and get that nice and tight. You can put some anti th uh, thread lock on there. You can pick that up on Amazon or at your hardware store. 
Next, we're going to install the anti-splash metal piece. I was trying to get away with not doing this because I didn't want another piece of metal. Frameless is frameless, right? But there was a significant gap from the, the threshold to the bottom of my glass door, about three quarters of an inch. And this pretty much took care of it. So I went ahead and cut that down with my Dremel tool, and I'm going to be gluing that down, make sure it's in the correct position, applying my silicone adhesive, super duper strength. We'll get that on there, nice and liberal. Make sure it's oriented correctly, not too far back, not too far forward. Again, you want that to prevent splash. So there's no perfect place to put it, but that's kind of where I put mine. And one of the final steps here, we're going to get everything siliconed. Now, I did switch to my 100% silicone, which acts as an adhesive as well, right? But it's not explicitly an adhesive. And I'll go ahead and get that completely sealed up. All of my perimeters, the instruction manual tells you exactly where that silicone needs to be applied. And my final step, I'll get my shower hardware, my uh, shower head back on. You'll want to take your shower head off if you feel like it's in the way. You don't want to be wrestling with that as you, in prior steps, as you maneuver the glass, especially that shower door that you have resting on the inside. We'll get that tightened down, and that is pretty much it. But of course, we need to water test it first before we can call it good and done, and before I can give my recommendation. So let's go ahead and turn on the water. Got the handheld spraying in that direction. We'll change the diverter on the shower head to rain so it comes down as well. And we'll see what happens here. Naturally, if you have a person inside the shower, water would be splashing off probably a little higher up. But right now it's just splashing off the bottom of the shower pan and you can see it on the glass so the shower door itself is doing its job the stationary glass let that splash a little bit more but things look like they are dry on the outside I don't see any water there and remember, I didn't put that anti-splash piece on. You may need to, of course, but I don't see the water doing a 180. It looks like we are dry, and that's it. We'll stop the video there. Overall, we've got a fully recommended shower, glass door, frameless, beautiful, and I think easy to install, relatively speaking. Of course, make sure you have a helper. This glass is incredibly heavy, but overall, I did it, and I'm pleased with the outcome, and hopefully, this video has helped you a little bit. Make sure to subscribe if you are interested in more do-it-yourself home projects like this around the house. I also do home product reviews on occasion. Thanks so much.